Hello, everyone. This is uh, this is another edition of the Sleepy 8 Métis podcast. I know if you're wondering about Sleepy 8, I know I haven't explained it in a while, but it always references that Lou Riel quote, my people will sleep for 100 years and will be the artists that we awaken them. Um, but we're not asleep. And that eight that fell over, that fell asleep, is the infinity symbol. So it's called Sleepy Eight for a reason. But a little bit of a takeoff from that punk label that came out in the 80s called Lazy Eight Records, right? Um, I just want to uh, sort of uh, thank everybody for subscribing. Um, thank everyone. We'll actually spread the word so we can get, actually get more subscriptions. It kind of fits our algorithm and how we move forward. But today uh, is a very special day because we have an election coming up on September 13th to the 19th here in the province of Alberta, um, but it is for the Métis Nation specific, not the prov provincial election, um, although we kind of wish that would happen over, over again. But um, needless to say, uh, here we are. Uh, we're moving into self-government framework uh, with Canada, more self-government agreements, uh, we went past the first reading in September, um, just be, I think it was in March, and now we're moving ahead with uh, hopefully a new government. So one of the candidates today that has stepped forward to be on the podcast is Joe Pimlot, and he's here to uh, represent himself and also talk about his, his campaign and his experience with the Métis Nation. So welcome, Joe. Um, do you want to introduce yourself to everybody or just quickly? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Joe Pimlot, and as uh, Lawrence said, I am running for the presidency for the Métis Nation of Alberta Otapimsawak government. I live here in Calgary and have been uh, a very, very uh, supportive person, of course, of your podcast and of the uh, the community here. So thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. Um. So I'll get on to, we sort of pre-planned some questions uh, with Joe to, to make sure that this is a fair sort of campaign. And uh, we always want to make sure these questions go before, uh, well before even we start filming. Uh, but uh, the first one is, what made you decide for, to run for the presidency? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. So kind of the intent that I had uh, with running for the presidency happened quite some time ago, back in 2011 when I became regional vice president of Region 3 down here and was uh, introduced to advocating and supporting our community. And over the course of the years, I just I had this vision of one day becoming president of the Métis Nation of Alberta. And 2023 has happened and the, uh, the nominations uh, came out, the, the listings, for people to run and I had to take my, my shot at it and here we are. And I'm moving forward with uh, with uh, my candidacy and going across the province, talking to community members and getting their, their thoughts on what their needs are and uh, their voices and moving forward with that. So it's, it's going really, really well. Oh, great. Um, <clears throat> so how long have you been active in the m &A? I know you talked about you being a regional vice president, those things. So, so it actually started back in 2008 mm -hmm. when I received a call from the Region 3 office. Uh, they were looking for somebody to run some events for the, uh, the Youth and Elders Conference that was happening at the AGA back then. So I went to the office and had a meeting with uh, the late Marlene Lands and John Parkins and was hired on the spot. So what happened after that was just, I, I couldn't write this any better. Um, I did the events. I was hired on as the youth coordinator, the FASD coordinator, and did that for uh, three years. And then as I had stated before, 2011 came around and based on the conversations that I had had with uh, the late Ephraim Bouvier and Marlene Lands, I decided I was gonna throw my hat in to run for regional vice president and it was a su success. So after that, I decided to run for provincial vice president and again, was successful in that. And it's been that catalyst of working with our community and working with our people that I just, I kept going. You know, I've had uh, a number of different amazing uh, positions with the Métis Nation uh, as well as um, Indigenous organizations outside of the Métis Nation management opportunities. 
So it's really been a, uh, a whirlwind of experience that I've been able to obtain over the past 15 years. Mm. And I wanted to bring that all together and utilize that experience that I've created and run for the presidency uh, in 2023. Well, um, <clears throat> I mean, I remember meeting you, I think, God, must have been 2009, around then. I was working at the Owatin Shelter, and and uh, you were with Marlene at that time. And we had tried to set up that Aboriginal Youth Worker Coalition. Mm. Uh, we had Bobby Narcisse and all of them coming to those meetings, all about youth workers. And I think that kind of upset a lot of the EDs at that time. <laughs> Because all of a sudden we were starting to, to rise up a little bit, but yeah, right. Yeah. It was, but I mean, the intent was was good and noble because uh, I mean, I, I don't have to tell you, we know that youth are our future, and it's not just a tagline; it's a fact that nowadays, you know, we know that a lot of our youth are running for office, and it's our responsibility uh, to support that and to assist in moving that forward. So it started a long time ago for myself and for yourself supporting our youth. Yeah, and then also Muskrat Métis Society. Um, that was one thing that we, you know, that cultural aspect for the regional office. And that's how I got introduced to, to Marlene and, and all the work that she did. But uh, no, I mean, we do have a, a very deep, deeper connection that people most mostly think. But I was in different agencies, you were here, so... Um, Let's go on to question number three okay. before we get too long in that path. Um, do you see any, um, see an area where change in governance will help the members, like this new change that you're pushing? Absolutely, absolutely. So I think with uh, the new structure in the government that is moving forward, communication is going to be a key and it's going to actually uh, work in our favor. I think that uh, with the, the redesign from the regions to the districts and having those uh, representatives that are, the, of course, the captains as well as the citizens' reps uh, advocating for their, their community members, that's going to resonate with that community piece a lot closer because they'll be able to work with them a lot more tight-knit mm -hmm. uh, as well as, again, another tagline, transparency. Transparency is Transparency is so critical to moving forward as a nation that I believe and I've, I've heard from so many people that we have to have. And I, th I see the change in government being a, a very challenging one. I mean, because moving into this new style, uh, the old region style worked for a while, but we've evolved from there. So having things uh, move in this direction, I believe, uh, will strengthen us as a nation and will allow us to work together. And it's going to give us a lot of amazing opportunities down the road. Mm. Nice. Um, <clears throat> the Métis Nation, you know, seem to have, you know, supported the North as much as possible. Um, I know it's a very Edmonton-centric sort of nation that we have in terms of our administration. Um you know, there's a lot of people meeting in the South, and I know by experience, being a regional president down here, uh, sort of some initiatives have been ignored, whether it's by government or, you know, certainly things that been supported a little bit different that, than, you know, south of the Red Deer River. Um, you, 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 how can you fix this, in, you know, with all the membership across the province? Oh, it's a really, really good question. And I've had this conversation with quite a few people, and you know, as you know, you know, with Alberta being so vast and the citizens being so kind of spread across the province, uh, it's a tough task to to really get some synergy when it comes to uh, being equal across the board. So this new government dynamic, it actually brings opportunity to think outside the box. And once elected, Creating a, a Southern Alberta satellite office, I think, uh, is the first priority that uh, we would have, at least from that perspective. You know, what that'll do is it'll bring uh, potential job opportunities down to Southern Alberta that would normally be primarily up in the, the central area region. And, and I think that um, it really gives the citizens down here a voice. It, it'll allow uh, the, the political side of it to have a space down here when we're dealing with government or proponents. It'll also give the, uh, the district captains 
and the uh, citizens reps an area that they can utilize and the citizens themselves. So it would be, you know, kind of like a one-stop shop that will actually bring people together. And I think it's long overdue and the community members down here have been asking for something like that for some time. So I do believe that it's a, an avenue that we really need to look into. Cool. Um, and uh, what is your vision? Interesting, interesting question. I, we, we hear that a lot. What's your vision for the future? And um, I want what most of our citizens want and have been asking for, which is, uh, you know, social programming and supports for all ages from youth, young adults, uh, parents, senior citizens, uh, health support such as, you know, prescription uh, support programs as well as uh, and a wellness account uh, and so much more. Increasing the economic development and tourism and making sure that our Otipimsawet government is, is supporting our districts and Métis entrepreneurs, you know, being between creating a lasting and supportive relationship with the settlements, I believe is a very important task that we need Mm -hmm. to undertake, uh, as well as continuing to support our harvesters, Mm -hmm. you know, and of course, there's so much more. It's not just those items specifically, but I believe that um, as we look at all the stuff that has happened throughout the years and all the great things that we've accomplished, we can build upon that. And I believe that we as a nation need to do that. Uh, Many hands, of course, make light work. And I believe that we need to move ahead. uh, And as of September 19th, that's going to happen. So the question I believe that every citizen should have for themselves is what vision do they see moving forward? Because I'm listening. Mm. Good. Um, The new organization has a great number of provincial reps. Um, how do you plan to hear everybody? So with the number of elected represent representatives, you know, increasing from 14 to 25, including myself, uh, there needs to be communication on every level. And of course, that is one of the most important things that we've, we've heard about is communication. And as we've seen over the past few years, communication styles have changed. Mm-hmm. I believe that some of the things that we can use, of course, is those online platforms when doing uh, uh, business, you know, Zoom, um, Teams, all those sorts of things in conjunction with our, our regular platforms of communication. And of course, listening to our citizens is one of the most important. So getting back to them in a timely manner, yeah. you know, having those, uh, those, those conversations, you know, those phone to phone conversations are, are so important uh, because people need to feel validated with their concerns. Mm. So I believe that that's going to be a a really critical part, not only with myself, with our administration, but also the citizens reps and the captains that are going to be in the grassroots level. So I believe it can be done and it'll also help with cutting costs where uh, they're unnecessary. So I believe that looking at multiple avenues of communication is going to be very, very important across the board. What about the diverse Métis communities? We live rural, we live urban. How, how are you going to work with all of them? I mean, so as we know, across Alberta, we have uh, uh, communities that are urban and rural and everybody has different needs. They all have similar requirements for their needs, but the needs are all different based on, you know, geography and, uh, and what's, what's available to them. You know, from food security, job security, you know, affordable housing, uh, health supports, uh, to youth and uh, and elder supports. Everything fundamentally is the same, but everybody is unique based on where they're from. And I believe that as president, I will be able to support, listen to, and assist with implementing those needs. Mm. Good. I mean, I'm. I really don't have too many questions, um, <clears throat> but in terms of our relationship with Canada and other governments, and I know that we're, you know, we want to be formidable partners and we need strength as a nation to actually be able to sit at those tables. Mm-hmm. And I think what you talk about is unity and, and good faith and communication. Those are areas that uh, 
you know, are definitely a good fit to, to, have, to get to that promised land. And um, certainly, you know, thanking, you know, Marlene and Ephraim and all of them of what they've done here in the region and, um, and yourself and having things just sort of move forward in a way that is definitely, uh, I think, mm. enriching for the provincial office, right? Um, and having that responsibility. But going to Ottawa to to make sure that we get to that self government place is is very vital, I think, for all of us. And we really need people that can sit at that table and converse, not just drink coffee, but just sit there and start really pushing our ideals here. So um, with that, I want to thank you for coming in today and uh, good luck on these next, I guess, three weeks or. Two weeks when this airs, anyways. Um, <laughs> but uh, definitely, you have to reach all corners as much as possible and talk to people. and And I know, Joe, you're you have that ability to go table to table to speak to everyone. So I think that's a real gift in this community. Okay. But uh, no, I wish you all luck. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I uh, I'm very appreciative of uh, of yourself and of course all my time that I've had down, you know, here. And all the experience that I've uh, I've been able to accumulate over the past fifteen years. So, mm. again, thank you so much for your time, and I appreciate uh, all your uh, all your hard efforts that you're doing to to get out to the community and to to be that voice because we do need voices, and yeah. we need to make sure that everybody does have that voice yeah. and isn't afraid to use it. Yeah. So thank you. And also, I want to you mentioned this is an open door, you know, for people to come and. And uh, we did send an invite out to Andrew to be here, hmm. uh, but they respectfully declined. And certainly you said, there, well, I'll be there, no problem. So, um, But I want to thank you for coming down to downtown Calgary. Um, I know it's a bit of a venture, a lot for us, because we like to live in those suburban areas. And um, But definitely, it's uh, we always feel that we have a place here. Whether it's Petroleum Club or whatever, hmm. we have a place everywhere. And uh, I want to thank you for coming in today, and good luck to you. Oh, I actually should mention to hit subscribe, <laughs> to tune in. I know Devin's rolling his eyes at me. Um, but uh, definitely we want to increase our subscription base and we want to keep moving forward as a, a podcast here in this new fall. And we're looking for sponsorship. So if you know any sponsors out there, uh, go to uh, sponsorship at babish.org. Uh, send us an email and hopefully we can uh, complete your request and move this channel forward but i want to thank everybody for coming today in the spirit of reconciliation we acknowledge that we live work and play on the traditional territories of the blackfoot confederacy siksika gaina bigani the satina and the stony nakoda nations the maintain nation of alberta region three and all people who make their homes in the treaty seven region of southern alberta